was interesting about the, the, the typefaces you mentioned that we had material for is all three of these share a bit of a common thread in that there are typefaces that were looking to styles that were not unique to one foundry. So Rockwell was a very successful typeface for monotype mm -hmm. and became a classic in its own right. Nice. But we found that going into the box of drawings for Rockwell, oh my God. that um, from the earliest production notes from 1933 when Rockwell was released, they were looking at linotype Memphis and, and Stymie from ATF. Right. So um, monotype Rockwell became its own design, but they were trying to, they were trying to look towards the success of linotype Memphis and American type founders Stymie, mm -hmm. which were in a similar model. So this geometric slab serif was another idea that was percolating in the day. Right, right, right. So do you use Rockwell? I use Rockwell, Rockwell not as much. Um, it's, it's it's something I like to use. So it's, it's a good point, say for logos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I find just because it's kind of got a real character to it. Yeah. Um, but it's something which I get excited about as a typeface as a whole. I might yeah. not ever use it, but I really <laughs> like the kind of the impression it can give if you use. It's another for me another bold typeface which can yeah. get a good impact on. So, what's the difference in paper? How come going from like a cartridge to from the Original layout paper. Is there any reason? Or um, there... uh, during World War II, the um, the really the heavy paper stock was hard to come by. Right. Um, so you find looking through these boxes of drawings, or oh. different stocks in different years, depending on whether or not they could actually get their hands oh, on this archival yeah, really paper. Interesting. But the paper was meant to last for ages and ages and ages um, because they knew that once you laid down a letter, you never wanted to redraw it no. if it was all possible to keep it the same because that could introduce a discrepancy into right. the system. I just finished a project actually that was, it used Rockwell as the seed for where it finally went. Mm -hmm. But the way a lot of projects happen, um, a designer will come to us and say that, well, we've been using this typeface from the library for our initial mock-ups, but it's not quite right for what we want right. to do, so we want to similar. figure out how to make what we really need. Wow. But that idea of what they've been playing basing with on, basing uh, on. sort of sets the tone. Mm. Um, but it was really great to take Rockwell, which is a typeface that I like, and make it into something yeah. else. And make it yours in a way as well, with also sort of it bespoke, which is, yeah. I quite like, love that process of taking something and enhancing it, or making it your own. Or exactly. Not necessarily making it better, but just adding your touch to it. Oh, I totally made it better. <laughs> <laughs> right, so shall we uh, yeah, take a look please, at some bidet? Yeah. Otherwise we'd be sitting here all day while sort of <laughs> pour over these. So Bedoni is another one of these typefaces where monotype had its version. But Bedoni, in a way, has become its own style of typography mm. um, after the, you know, John Battista Bedoni came up with this style. He was a printer in Italy. Everyone made a Bedoni. Right. Um, so as Monotype is getting ready to do its Bedoni, it gathered all this uh, material see. about all the other Bedonis out and they there. they based on that, and they based on that, and based on that. Well, not so much to base it on that, but to really figure out what the overall right. design of Bedoni could be so that Monotype could figure out what, you know, what was the available space for its Bedoni. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love this test proof yes. where someone has, so spotting out those has, poking uh, out. has put in a lot of yes. loose bits of type onto this sheet to compare the letters and it's do almost, test prints. It's almost those sort of bits which almost excite me sometimes even more because they're kind of the, the mistakes and the kind of yeah. process people go through and that's, yeah. that's what excites me. But this sheet of paper even, the sheet of paper looks like it was from a pretty old printed yeah, volume. very much so. So Monotype Spadoni was first released in 1921, according to this typewritten draft right. press release. Series 135. So actually, even that's an interesting tip that between 1900 and 1921, Monotype had released 135 families. My God. That was the explosion in printing and design that was happening because of the introduction of the machines. It's quite incredible, isn't it? Oh, God, here we go. This. Yeah. You do the grand reveal. I'll probably drop so it. So this is me. a specimen of the Bedoni from Lanston Monotype, which is the American Monotype Corporation. Brilliant. I'll even put it right side up for the camera. But these, 
So monotype would often make these specimen sheets like this that were just beautiful posters in their own right. Incredible, showing off the typefaces. But this tells the story of John, B John Battista Bodoni, born in 1740, who wow. did the first Bodoni-style typeface for his foundry. Superb. So when you look for typefaces to use in the projects you do, do you tend to look towards the classics, or do you also scope around for, for new flavors? I do scope around. Um, I always do start with classics first. Yeah. Um, I suppose I like the emotion they give and the punch they give and the power they give. It, dep it obviously depends on the job, but yeah. most of the time I do go to the classics. I think, that, I think that's why I am so interested in a lot of these older typefaces that we have in the library and using them as starting points for other projects yeah. is because you know, a typeface will have a life cycle that crosses generations and people learn what to associate with certain typefaces mm. and those associations can become a shorthand when you pull it into play and it gives you the opportunity to work with those associations yeah. or push against them in a very surprising yeah, way. Yeah, very much so. I mean, and with new designs you sometimes have to you're going into uncharted territory yes. about what they can do, yes. which is great, yeah. but also risky. Yeah. I, think, I think every type designer has to get used to the idea that when you make something, you just set oh, it yeah. off into the world and hope for the best. Exactly. <laughs> off. More than, I've heard more than one type designer describe their typeface as being like children, and you try to raise them well, but you never know what's going to happen. No, exactly. You've got the best to prepare themselves for the big bad world. Yeah. They're still going to go out and be all punk rock, whether you want yeah, to yeah, or not. Yeah, absolutely. We like having people come in to look at all this stuff because um, it gives context to the typefaces that we have available today to really get this vivid sense of this history that mm. they came from. So I love showing this. Off. Good, good. All right, thank you. Bye.